Last October, Josh Cavallo came out as gay, which these days wouldn't be that exceptional, except that Josh is the only top tier male football player in the world to be openly queer. His coming out video has been viewed over 13 million times. So I decided to sit down and have a chat about why he decided to share his story and how he's handling his newfound fame. Cavallo doing really well there. You can use Cavallo. Give me that belt. Cavallo. Aiming footballer Josh Cavallo has announced that he's gay. Hey, Josh. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for your time and joining us. Thank you for having me on this show. All I want to do is play football and be treated equally. Josh Cavallo, welcome to One Plus One. Ah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to meet you in person. It's nice to see you in person. Um, yeah. We are here at the home of football in Melbourne. I'm sure you've been on this stage or this field or this pitch <laughs> many times before. What does it feel like when you're about to come on, when you hear the roar of 30,000 fans in the stadium? Tell me what that feels like. Yeah, it's a study, like stepping out onto that field every time. And it's really exciting to, you know, go and kick some goals and, and show everyone what you got. It's, I get a buzz every time I step into the stadium. Yeah. Are you there with your teammates? Do you have some sort of like manly noise chant that you all make? That's what I picture. <laughs> 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 sort of thing. Yeah, it just depends. Like it changes like through the crowd. It's a mixed crowd. So you get kids, you get fathers, you get mums, you get everyone here. So it changes from time to time, but it depends what team you play in their type of culture too. So yes, you do get the the aggressive ones, <laughs> it's a part of the game, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. You know, our team, Adelaide United, when we're in that change room, before we come out, we always do a special huddle. Yeah. And um, that gets us going when we come out here roaring, ready to go. I love that. And do you, do you come out on the, is it like, I don't know, when I go on stage, sometimes like I'll feel like a bit butterfly and I'll start like singing and I'll feel a bit nervous, I'll be a bit shaky, but then you sort of settle into it and you enjoy it. Is it the same with football? Yeah, look, I think maybe like my first couple of appearances, it was like that. It was a bit like nervous and you're looking into the crowd, but when you step on that field now and I've played over nearly 50 professional games, you, it's your job. I don't look at the crowd, it's, I'm focused. I don't hear people talking. It's just when you step on that stage, you're in your zone, you're, you're, you're ready to go. So yeah, I would say the first couple of times it was a bit like that, but now it's just, it's normal for me. Take me back to young Josh. You grew up in Southeast Melbourne. Yes. What was your childhood like? Uh, my childhood was pretty cool, you know. I had a really cool grandfather in, Mo I'm half Maltese, so we say Nannu, that means grandfather. And he was like my best friend. I lived with him practically for most of my childhood because my parents were very committed in a shop they had. Um, and I would often find myself with my grandfather and my grandma, my nanna, we say grandma, um, that's what we say. And she would go to bingo. So I'd obviously be hanging out with him and through my childhood, he just raised me up and I had a, a soccer ball at my feet from day one. And I really loved something about this football that, that just grew on me. And I just wanted to be a professional athlete and, and grow up and, and I found myself uh, here on the world stage. Do you remember your first football game? Wow. I think I was probably like 12. Yeah. Um, I know which club I played for. Yeah. It was Brighton Soccer Club in the southeast side. We have that in common, Josh. Oh, really? I played for the Brighton Bulldogs <laughs> in Brisbane. I think I was probably about like five or six. I do have photos. Really? Um, for a couple of years, yes. Oh, wow. A different Brighton. So you yes. played for Brighton. Yes, I played for Brighton and I loved to score goals then. I was, I was a striker and now as a professional athlete, I'm at the back, I'm on the left side of left back. Um, so it's what changed is, a little what does bit. That mean? <laughs> does a striker kick goals? Striker, yes. Yeah, striker is like the guy that, the that scores the glory, does all those celebrations, and I'm the one that stops the goals. So I'm at the back and giving him the ball. So yes, okay. I've gone from attacking to defensive now. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, and what were you like as a kid when you were when you were 12 playing that first game with Brighton? Um, what sort of kid was Josh? Well, I didn't even think I knew myself. It was just all about having fun those days. And, and look, I didn't even know I wanted to pursue soccer as a dream. You know, everyone's dream as a kid is to be a sporting athlete. And, and 
For that me, one, it just well, came. It wasn't mine. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not your dream. <laughs> Yours was rude, but that's okay. No, um, yeah. Look, when in my environment, you know, it was the epitome to be a sporting athlete, and and for me, like growing up, I, that was my dream, and I wanted to chase that goal, and and I worked very hard. I worked extremely hard on myself, and and on and off the field. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy and grateful today. I can look back and say, you know, that little Josh that was 12 years old, admired to be a professional athlete and look down the track 22 years now, I've played three seasons, four seasons as a professional athlete. So I'm pretty proud. Did you have any siblings? Yeah, I've got yeah. one older brother. Yeah. He's three years older than me. Um, wow, where do I start? He's amazing. Yeah. He was very supportive through my coming out and I really learned that, you know, I had someone I could count on through mm. that time and, and it was great to see that, you know, someone that close to my family and that is influential in my life that I see as a role model was there for that time I needed him and, and it's just nice to see the smile he has on his face and how proud he is of me just being who I am today. And he was the first person you told yeah, when you came out? Yeah, he was out? the first person alongside my parents, yeah. Okay. And what was that like when you told him? It was awesome. Yeah. Look, it was like, I was really shocked because a brother and brother thing, I never really gave anything away or never really told him about my feelings or, or how sensitive I was to stuff like that. But look, I wasn't expecting the reaction he did and my parents did. It was absolutely really crazy. Like they gave me this big hug and they just said, you know what, Josh, go and enjoy yourself. Go and live your life. Like, we're just sorry that you had to hide it for such a long mm. time. So it was really nice to see. And it's a moment I will cherish forever. Tell me about that feeling of having to hide before you came out. What was that like being a, a professional football player? There was no other pr out players anywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, how did that make you feel? It was painful. Mm. It was pretty painful. Every time I stepped in the change room, I stepped on that field, I wanted to be focusing on football. And growing up, having the pressure of wanting to be a professional footballer and earning those contracts, I also had a side note of, I wanted to be myself. Mm. You know, I knew this was an environment where I would fit in. I was seen as different if I wanted to be myself. And that's something that I did struggle for a lot of years, to find that in myself. And once I've told people, but I felt so much weight off my shoulders and so much relief, I'm tired trying to perform at the best of your ability and to live this double life. It's exhausting. It's something that I don't want anyone to experience. When I made that post and I did that coming out story, I didn't care how the public react because I knew I was happy with myself and whichever way it went down, I would be happy and I would be able to live Josh Cavallo's authentic life. The response and support I have received is <laughs> immense. It's starting to make me think that why have I been hiding this burden for so long? I want to inspire and show people that it's okay to be yourself and play football. It's okay to be gay and to play football. You know, I want to show all the other people that are struggling and that are scared, you know, whoever it may be, that don't act like someone you're not, be yourself. So tell me about telling your coaches, because that would have been the first step to making that video, right? Yeah. So. I told my two coaches, I walked into their office and it was just Ross Aloisi at the time. Carl, our head coach, hadn't walked in yet. He was still coming in from training. And um, I sat Ross down and I said, Ross, I need to tell you something. Um, it's pretty big. And he said to me, you're not going home. He knows I'm a Melbourne boy and I'm from Adelaide and I was in Adelaide. And he goes, you're not going home. What's wrong? And I'm like, no, 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 it's nothing to do with that. It's something personal. And he's like, oh, do you need help? Like, do you need... I said, no, 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 just listen. <laughs> and I go, Ross, I'm coming out, I'm gay. And he goes, is that it? I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, big deal. You like boys or you like girls? What's the, what's the big deal? I like that. It was just humor he added into it. And it was just really nice to see because Ross, as a coach, is very aggressive, knows what he wants, affirmative. And it was nice to see that soft side of him and to know that he has that caring side. And it was like, he was my, I looked up to him as my father figure. You know, I didn't have that in Adelaide and he was a great support for me. And he, you know, slapped me over the ears when I needed to be slapped. And then 
also picked me up when I did a good thing as well. So we had a great relationship and he was just the perfect fit for me who I wanted to share that news with. Mm. I know for me, that first moment where I, where I told someone, or actually they asked me and I was like, yes. And then I waited for a negative reaction because I'd been so conditioned to expect something bad. And when I actually got a positive reaction back, I look back now and I think how amazing that was, that it sort of set the tone for me and the future. How important was that first reaction? It was, it was huge. I think it was a confidence booster, definitely, yeah. as you said. But look, through all my experience in telling people face to face, even when I told my team a couple of days after, mm. it was phenomenal. It was great. Not one person in that room. I just felt everyone's energy just of love come mm. to me. Every single person in that room came up to me and gave me a hug and said, Josh, it's fine. We're super proud of you. I've played at other teams. I've been in a lot of different change rooms for football. That culture there is something special and it allowed me to be the person I am today. It's interesting, isn't it? Because like at that time, there was no other out players in the world. There had only ever been one out player ever in the UK. And obviously there are more queer players just by odds. Like let's of say course, one in 10. Of course. There's got to be quite a few. I mean, I personally know because I've dated some of them. <laughs> I've had your, your pro soccer. That's cheeky. <laughs> I've had your pro... I'm not giving names. I'm not telling clubs <laughs> yeah. or positions um, of the sport. Um, no, I've, I've dated a, a pro soccer player. I've dated a pro boxer. I've dated an Olympian. I've dated a rugby player. So, like, I know that there are queer identities out there in sport. I think for a lot of those people, though, they didn't have the language because it's such a heteronormative straight environment and for a lot of people like the biggest fear that they could have is being gay and yeah. really in their minds you're gay or you're straight there's obviously a lot more gray area in between when it comes to attraction um, but I think that in sport in particular gay men and queer men often feel like there's not a place for them I think through my story, it broke the ice and people realised that, wow, we're so behind in the footballing culture. 2021, and we're still behind in the footballing culture. Like, let's be real here. And I think it was a stepping stone that, look, when I was younger, you're right, there was only one player and it was Justin Fashionu. And he came out in the 1990s mm. and he unfortunately passed away through suicide. He didn't have the support around him. Mm. And I feel for him and his family. I know what it's like looking up to him I wanted to be exactly like him and I, he, was my, he was my idol and to know that's how his life ended, mm. it was heartbreaking. So I want to be that, that person for those people, you know, those, those little Joshes growing up that think that there's not a place for them, that, you know, will turn away from the game. I've had so many people come to me and say, Josh, because of you, I still play football mm. or because of you, I've helped me come out to my family. What's that feeling like? Oh my God, it's like ecstatic. It's one thing to get acknowledged by famous people and celebrities, but it's another thing to get messages from mums, dads, grandparents, and to say that I've changed their kids' lives or kids themselves that, that message me. It's just, it's absolutely breathtaking. There's something that sort of shifts your world, isn't there? Not just the coming yeah. out, but then hearing that other people have been inspired by you. I feel like it gives your life this whole other sense of meaning that you didn't even know. You're like, I just wanted to play football, but now exactly. I get to be a role model. Exactly. How does that feel? Does that feel like a pressure or is it an excitement? For me, it's an excitement. Yeah. You know, I get motivated by these people. When I step up on that field, at some point in this season, I had, did have negative comments and I did have a negative crowd around me. And in that tough time when it was really hard, you know, the thing that motivated me with those messages there's people that reached out and said, you made me who I am today and you made me come out to my family. If I'm going to help save hundreds of thousands of people's lives, bring all the hate you want. Mm. I'll continue to be myself and I have no regret with that. What is it like when you experience that hate? Are you on the field and like you hear somebody yell something out? You're there to play a game and you're there to, to win the game. You know, you give everything for the club and the badge that you wear and, and you know, the last thing you want is someone having a personal attack on you on the sideline for who you are, mm. not what team you play for. Um, of course, you know, as a professional athlete, we're trained to not react, mm. but we have a heart. Mm. At the end of the day, we all have families. We go home and we have thoughts and we think of things that happen, you know, 
there's some times where I think of things that happen on the, on the football field where people said something, but I, have no, I gave no reaction, but it got to me. I always think about what drives a person to sort of go out of their way to express hate. I think, dare I say, probably usually men, usually straight identifying men, who are sitting there in the audience, and there's something so fragile about their identity that they feel the need to try and tear a shred off of you because of who you love. Like, all we're talking about here is being attracted to somebody of the same sex. And I guess, I mean, I know, and, and, I, and I think you know how wonderful that joy is of, you know, being attracted to somebody. I think everybody knows that feeling. And so it's weird to think that, like, somebody sitting there in the crowd and they yell out some sort of hateful comment. And I always think, like, like, why? Mm. Like, what do you think the motivation is behind that? I don't know. I don't know if it's a personal attack or it's just a part of the game. Like, I think that sometimes when, you know, you miss a penalty or miss a shot, you're going to get hate either way. Not everyone in this world is going to love you for who you are. There's always going to be someone that doesn't like you. But there's a difference between, like, you missed the penalty, you dickhead, and you missed the penalty, you're poofed up. Do you know of what I course, mean? Of course, of course. But I think, for me, I try and take it as the same way because for me, if they're talking about me in a bad way, it means that I've done something good. It means that I'm really getting under their skin and bothering them. Yeah. That means that I'm closer to scoring a goal and they can continue sitting in the crowd and drinking their beer. Mm. It doesn't bother me. Okay. I always found that like, um, sometimes there was that idea that like, putting someone else down makes you feel better. Yeah. So I would often think about what their motivation was to want to put me down. And I would just see them as actually being someone who um, felt insecure in themselves. So they're putting on this bravado of like, oh, look, I'm a big man. But actually, that big man is a little boy who's scared. And so they feel the need to like tear a shred off you to make you feel better. Yeah. So sometimes, yeah, I try and think about that and be like, oh, actually, that's really sad that you felt the need to say something and hateful. And express, yeah. yeah. It is sad, but it's like, look, I just take it as we're, doesn't matter who you are, you're going to experience some sort of hate in your life. And in the foot, on the football pitch, it's pretty common, mm. whether it's got to do with my issue or whether it's someone else that is identified as straight. Mm. So, um, yeah, look, it's still new and early days mm. for me, but I have been prepared and I do know what to expect and I'm ready for that. And as I said before, like the hundreds of thousands of people that my story is affecting and if that's going to mean people are going to yell stuff and there's going to be one old guy in the crowd saying a bad thing, that doesn't bother me. Because mm -hmm. I know that at the end of the day, I'm helping thousands of people. That's the thing, isn't it? Depends on what you focus on. There are 30,000 people in this stadium who are cheering and maybe there's like one or two saying not so nice things. You know what's so funny? That now, after coming out, I have even opposition fans wanting to talk to me after the game. Yeah. This never, ever happened before. <laughs> this time last year, they were like, boo. Now they want to get photos and talk and, and meet me. And it's just really nice to see at the end of the day, it just shows that this was a bigger game than football. Mm. And we had a pride game mm. at Adelaide United this year through my coming out. And that was a really exciting time. And it's so good to see that all teams around the league, there are fans that go to the game with rainbow flags now. Mm. That's incredible. It's a that rainbow was, jersey. That was unheard of, exactly right. And I think it's the most popular jersey in the league. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy in such a small time what we've achieved. And I hope to can continue to grow that legacy in the A-League. And so you told your brother, you told your family, you told your coaches, you told your teammates, and then next it was time to make Post. A post on the Instagram, <laughs> coming out to the world. Yes. Was that nerve wracking? What's that feeling? Did you push the button? Yes. So it was crazy. It was actually straight after I told the teammates uh -huh. and we had a huddle in the change room and it was really nice. And I walked out of that change room and I was just on top of the world. I was like, wow, like this is really cool. Everyone has embraced it. Everyone loves me for who I am. I got in the car, I sat down and I pressed post. Did you throw up? I feel like it's vomiting in um, I basically exploded. Yeah. Like, it was crazy. And then just from the get-go, it just went boom. And it was just everywhere. Mm -hmm. And through that video, it shows my raw emotions, you know. That was the first time I ever spoke publicly of who I was. I don't know. I think... I don't know what else to say.
Whew. That video of two minutes was clipped from three hours. Mm. There was times where I was in front of that camera and I wasn't saying anything for half an hour because I didn't know what to say, you know? It was a very powerful moment for me to express and it was like I was rebirthing who I truly am. What were the feelings that in that two hours were holding you back? Was it fear of rejection? I think it was because I've been masking who I am for such a long time. That was 21 years of being the acting Josh, mm. the one that I want people to see me as, mm. the one that doesn't give hints away that he's gay. Mm. You know, when it came to the conversation about girlfriends and stuff, like, oh, I could write a book of the stories I made up. That, <laughs> oh, would you, that, that's feeling though of like, when somebody says, oh, you know, Josh, yeah. got a girlfriend. Yeah. Is that just a sinking feeling? It's really awkward yeah. because it's like, this would just happen randomly. Yeah. It could happen, you know, when you're getting a drink break on the pitch. Like we're joking around in training. It could happen in the change rooms when, you know, you, you're just coming off the field, taking your boots off. It was a constant 24 seven thing. And, you know, for me, when I stepped out of the football environment, and I went home, it was the same again. Mm. I had my parents say, oh, how are you hanging out with this person or that person? You're seeing this person. It's a constant lie mm. and it's so exhausting. And having that pressure on being professional football and trying to pave the way of who I am on the field, it was a very difficult time for me. And I think the thing about that lie is that when you're putting forward a you that isn't real, any love that you get or any validation that you get is for the lie. And so it's really hard to ever connect and feel that love and validation because you're just pretending all the time. Yeah. And I think that's, that's got to be a message for anybody out there, whether they're in sport or not, that there's something about being true to who you are that is greater than any loss that you perceive you might have. Because before you come out, you think, oh gosh, what will everybody think? What will I lose? But perhaps the thing that people don't consider is what will I gain? And that sense of freedom, it sounds like, has been so important to you. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely opened up a new chapter in my life. And it's, it's true. It's like I've closed an old book and opened a new one and like, this last eight months have felt like five years because I'm living every day to the fullest. So that coming out video has now been viewed 13 million times, which is epic. And apart from, you know, all of the people it's touched, it's also gotten a lot of positive feedback from huge names in your sport, right? Yeah, definitely. Give me some name drops. They're all phenomenal. They're all icons to me. You know, you got your Marxist Rashfords, you got your Messies, you know. These people that are iconic in the football game and, and to reach out to me and show their love and support, you know, Jesse Lingard as well. It's really nice to see that there's a big hug out there in that world. That's got to be a message for other players, right? That the people at the top are saying, it's cool. We don't care if you're gay or queer, like we support you. Definitely, look, it's, it's, it's encouraging and it just shows that all these straight icons, you know, Zlatan Ibrahimovic too, Griezmann, someone that's won World Cups, they're encouraging this and they're saying, why is this a stigma? Let's make it normal. Like, why is this even a problem? Why is this a topic to talk about? And they're realizing the significance and the movement and the power this has on the public. Mm. And it's just great to see these icons in sport get around it. And what about some icons in the, uh, the pop star world? Yeah, I had a uh, Courtney Act. Oh. Which, uh, <laughs> no, she's lovely. Um, no, I was really impressed by everyone that reached out, you know, Little Nas X, Alan DeGeneres, Ricky Martin, you know, Sam Smith. A lot Can we of... back up to Little Nas? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Little Nas. He's, uh, I was quite shocked with that. That was probably like, one of the biggest that reached out. But yeah, it's lovely to see that these people are, are there for me. And I'm, um, you know, just the regular Josh Cavallo from Melbourne Boys. So <laughs> um, it was nice to see that um, they reached out and shared their love. Australia, we have marriage equality, but Qatar, where the World Cup is being held, uh, still criminalises homosexuality. How important do you think it is for sporting organisations to consider the, the human rights of the countries that they're hosting these huge events in? It's huge. Mm. It's very significant. You know, we're talking about life or death here. Like, it's, it's pretty scary. And for an example, with the World Cup being hosted in Qatar, it does question my ability to attend the World Cup, you know? Is it my, something I really want to do in my football career? It's the ultimate thing to represent your country. But at the same time, do I want to risk my life? Mm. Is it worth my life? Yeah. Probably not. It's quite frightening, but look, it's 
something we're still working on and hopefully in the next generation and the next decades to come, these rules change. And through my story, you know, it sparked the conversation in Qatar, the World Cup. The World Cup CEO made comments about it and wants to reach out and speak to me and work on it. Through my story, it's nice to see that it could possibly change laws in the future. Mm. That's really nice to see. And I wasn't expecting that through just a little story of Josh Cavallo that I could be influential like that. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I know that they've said that you'd be welcome there, but I guess the thing is it's, it doesn't really feel all that helpful when it's so conditional. It's like, oh yes, Josh, you can come, yeah. but any Qatari people, exactly, you definitely yeah. cannot be gay. Otherwise we'll, you know, criminalize you just yeah. for who you love. Uh, hopefully it's not just an act because it's been showed some media on, or there's been a light drawn on Josh Cavalli as a footballer and going to a World Cup mm. that's in Qatar. Like, hopefully that's just not the reason why. I want to do I mean, this even for if the it people. is though, and it does bring about change, then that's a good thing. Certainly. But it shouldn't be sparked through that. Mm. It should be to help the people there. Yeah. It should be to help the people in other countries that are fighting the same thing. I'm sure you get it too. There's people that reach out and say, I'm struggling in this country. Mm. They do not encourage it. We cannot do this. You know, it's a matter of life or death here. Mm. Can you help me? This is the stuff that breaks my heart mm. because I know if I was in that situation, yeah. I wouldn't want to be there. So what is next? I mean, football, obviously at the core, but are there other things that you want to do? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm excited to travel and to see the world. As I said, I haven't been overseas, um, so I'm really excited to do that. And yeah, it's, uh, in this off season, I've got a, a month and a half off. So um, I'm excited to explore the world and to see what, what it has to offer. And yeah, look, as a professional athlete and as a footballer, you know, your dreams to play overseas. So I hope one day I can chase those goals and play over in America or in the UK. That's a dream of mine. I feel like there's this hangover in people's minds about gay people, gay men in sport, not so much women, because the women are leading the way when it comes to that. And there's this hangover that like men, gay men in sport don't go together. And I think that a lot of queer people do feel that separation when they're young, they might love sport. And as they're getting older, they feel like, oh, maybe there's not a place for me here because they can't see anybody else who's like them. And I think it's so important now that um, a whole generation of young queer people will be able to enjoy football um, and, and not have to worry about whether it's for them or not. Because obviously sport's for everyone, right? Definitely. And I think that, you know, through my junior club, I mentioned before, Brighton Soccer Club, when I came out as recognition of my coming out and acknowledgement, they put on, they put a pride to play badge on their logo. So this means that, you know, anyone playing the team, people watching them and the games, they see it's an environment that's encouraging for the LGBTQ people. That's phenomenal. Mm. That's something that didn't happen five, ten years ago. You can see at Adelaide United, quite a big fan base is quite gay. Yeah. So it's really exciting to I see. I can't wait to come <laughs> in high drag wearing my Josh Cavallo rainbow <laughs> yes, yes. jersey. I'm really excited to have you there. So it's, it's really exciting for me to see what the future holds and to know in this short space of time I've already done so much, it's, it's really exciting. Well, thank you so much for joining me on One Plus One today, Josh. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.